Welcome, Java students, into your first foray into web scraping. In this first video, we're going to get everything set up to enable the web scraping and just test the basic functionality so that we can be confident that we're ready to dive into some of the weeds in the next one. The first thing we're going to do is in NetBeans, we're going to create a new type of project that works a little bit better with the uh, JSOUP library that we're going to import. Instead of making a Maven folder, which has some kind of glitchiness right now for some reason, with the JSOUP, it just has some issues with package management right now. We're going to work with Ant, which is a lot more of a lightweight, simple product or build strategy that we're going to work with. And so in here, I am going to create a web scraper pro project and let it build uh, a, a main class for me, web scraper. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit and get it set in my main to do some testing. So we got this uh, web scraper now ready to go and built. And what I want to do next is make sure that I have this libraries folder that when I right click on it, I see this add jar folder. And we need to actually snag a jar file for the library we'll be using in this tutorial. Head to Chrome and type in JSOUP. And we're going to head to this website called JSOUP. And we are going to be taking a look at some of the content in it. Notice the site does have some tutorial information. I'm going to be attempting to kind of explain this in a bit more of a clear way. This, these tutorials involve some strategies and functionality that are a little bit beyond what we need to be doing right now. So I'm going to, I'm going to convert it or uh, translate it for you into an easier format for us to work with temporarily. But to get set up, we're going to head to this getting started section oop, and download the JSOUP VAR. If you're watching this video at a later date, you might see an updated version of this, but you just want the core library. So click on it, have keep the file and have it downloaded and so that you have access to it. In fact, I highly recommend that you move it out of your downloads folder into somewhere more persistent, maybe into a, a kind of a file that you use for reference files for different projects. But I'm gonna keep mine there for now, just because on this computer, I'm not too concerned about all that stuff. And so now that I have that file downloaded, we can head back into our program and right click on libraries and add jar. Next, we wanna find the downloads folder and then take a look for our JSOUP jar. I downloaded it twice by accident. Well, because I showed you here. I'm just going to open the original one that I have. And I should now see it popping in as another library reference in this libraries folder. The JDK 15 comes with all the core Java library stuff that we can just reference out of the box. But I want to have a new set of functionality I can reference. And if you're curious, you can actually peek inside of it and see some of the different components inside and even really dig into some of these classes and see all the internal code of what we'll be working with, like this JSOUP class, for example. You can see all sorts of stuff that we'll be kind of working with in terms of how this is processing information. But we don't really need to worry about it. We just need to know how to use this to our advantage for this project. So I'm gonna close this stuff all up. And what I need to do next in my project is do a couple of imports. The first thing that I want to import, well, actually, we'll let this actually import on its own as we write stuff. So what we're really going to be focusing on in this section is pulling or scraping information from websites. So I want to be able to have a reference to websites stored in strings. So what kind of a website should we reference and pull data in from? Well, I've chosen the perfect one to begin with. This Wikipedia page on cats because cat pictures are really what the internet was made for. You can find a website of your own, whatever one you want for this testing, but I'm going to get the URL of this website. And really what we're looking to do here, here's a little sneak preview, is if I press F12 on my keyboard, I see the sidebar pop up that has this elements tab that lists the HTML and CSS code that this that builds this website. And I can kind of pop open some of these different sections and see there's actually a ton of content buried in here. And as I highlight over things, I can see that it's different chunks, different sections of content are contained in different parts of this code. And what we're trying to do with our JSOUP library is be able to interact with that HTML code in as clean and clear and confident a way as we're able to. So right now we're simply just building a connection to it. So let's get, get that web page moved out of the way and we're gonna copy and paste the URL into this string reference just to kind of hold a placeholder of this. Now to actually work with accessing this information from the website, we need to actually have a try catch block. So let's make one, a try catch, and we'll be working with a IO exception. We'll call it IO exception E, and we need to import it. 
control shift I for the IO exception. And then I'll have the printout of the exception down below. And all that's left is to put in the content of the try catch block. Because we're technically inputting and outputting not stuff from, to files, but actually from a web service. And technically behind the scenes, we're kind of like querying our web browser to actually create a file of HTML data that it feeds us. So it kind of is still an IO just through an intermediary process. Anyway, we now need to write down this line of code. We're gonna be working with something called a document in this section, as well as accessing this JSOUP library. In particular for now, the connect method that allows us to connect to a website and get the content from it. Notice my program, when I typed in JSOUP, automatically imported the JSOUP library. If yours doesn't, just do the import, alt enter when you, uh, you select over it, and make sure you have org.jsoup.jsoup imported. However, we also need to import document, and here we need to be very careful because there's lots of different types of documents that are possible to build in Java. If I press alt enter, I see that I have three options. I have the JSOUP document, the Javax swing document, which is kind of a visual UI, and then a W3C DOM document, which I don't actually even remember what it's for. Uh, probably file management. But uh, we want to make sure we actually use the JSOUP one. This particular type of document is what we want access to. It's going to make or break our functionality. Now with this imported document is accessible, it's happy, and we're able to actually snag a document type information from our connection to the HTML. Now I have some kind of reference to information from this website. Interesting. Just to make sure this connection is working, we're going to do a couple more things to end this first tutorial. I'm going to snag a title from this doc. And if I press dot beside this doc, you'll see that we have a lot of options for functionality that we can work with. The one that I want to choose for now is just to snag the title of this website. And then we're going to print it out. Let's just print out the title and make sure that it matches up with this website to ensure that connection is being made properly and that everything that we've written here is working as expected. So I'm going to hit run and I see this prints out cat Wikipedia, which is indeed the site that we tried to access. So here we go. We've built our first connection point to an actual website through Java. And in the next video, we're going to dive a whole lot deeper.